In this video I'll be talking about distro plates. This is something that you guys have been requesting a lot in the comments to get to know a bit more about, so I'm going to do my best to try and walk you through how I design and make these. I always start out by measuring up and figuring out exactly what I want this distro plate to do and where I want it to be in the case. In this case I wanted to have it at the bottom and then have the GPU, um, a radiator, and the CPU and reservoir connected to it, as well as a pump from the bottom. So it's a fairly complex one. I always start out by drawing everything up in a small notebook and then transfer it into a 3D program. In this case I'm using SolidWorks, but everything will basically do um, SketchUp, Inventor, whatever you can get your hands on. I'll be posting a few links in the description so you can check out some of the programs that I would recommend. So when you have all of your holes marked on a plate like this, you want to figure out your loop order. This works just like it would in any normal tube loop. So from the reservoir to the pump, and then basically from the pump to everything else. With all of this done, uh, the next part is very open. It's um, where you design and decide how you want your entire distro plate to look. I normally go for very straight lines and sharp bends. Um, to try and get an industrial look. You can do these in any shape that you really want, but try and make them so simple that the fluid has an easy path from one hole to the other. It'll make it easier to fill the system and drain it and yeah, just be generally better for your loop. In the end of this video I will include a full time lapse of me doing this distro plate in SolidWorks so you can try and replicate it if you want to. What I'm doing here is that I'm making the O-ring channels for the 2mm O-ring to sit inside. This is one of the things that I get a lot of questions about. How wide should it be, how deep should it be, and what type of O-ring I use. I always prefer to buy the O-rings in set length, so um, some people glue them together, but I prefer to have them in a certain length. The channels that the O-ring should uh, lie inside should be between 2.2 and 2.5 millimeters wide and 1.35 millimeters deep. The main channel for the fluid should be 30 millimeter wide at least and then 5 to 8 millimeters deep. The depth really depends on how thick a plate that you're using. In this case, it's a 10 millimeter plate, so I would I would not recommend going above 6 millimeters in depth. Otherwise you wouldn't have anything to to support the acrylic from the behind. So for example, if you go 9mm in depth, you would only have a 1mm wall thickness, which would probably quite easily break. Next up is finalizing the design and making the threaded holes for the M4 bolts so that'll keep this plate and the other 10mm plate together. Some people glue these plates together, but the downside of gluing is that if anything goes wrong or it's leaking, you can't really just take it apart and fix it. As a rule of thumb, I'm having a distance of around 40mm between each M4 hole. Each hole is drilled to 8mm depth and then threaded with an M4 tap. This will leave you with around 6mm usable thread. Once you've finalized the design, the next thing to do is to mill the plate and finish it up. If you can't mill it yourself, then you could try and see if you can find someone to do it for you. I will be linking a few people that I know do this kind of work in the description. After milling, depending on who you get to mill it and what machine they have, you might need to either do all of the tapping yourself or just finalize the tapping. I prefer to use M4 for all of my things. When doing tapping, it's very important to have the threading being completely straight. I use a old bits power fill port fitting to, to keep the G1 quarter tap 
straight down. Um, you can also use an, a drill press if you have a, a vertical drill press to to make sure that when you start it, it's completely straight. After you got it inside there and started it off, then you can just finish it off by hand. The way that I'm doing it here is not the best way in the world. I would prefer to use a drill press, but yeah, sometimes you gotta use what you have. Here I'm doing a test to see if everything fits together properly. It's a good idea to lubricate your o-ring before mounting them so that they will help being squeezed into the channels correctly. I only mount this with a couple of screws in the first run to make sure that the o-rings are haven't shifted out of place. After doing this I can mount all of the screws and I can tighten it down. Make sure to not tighten the screws from one end to, to another, but go randomly, otherwise you might stress the plate too much. When finishing up, I would always recommend to use an air tester to see if you have any leaks in these parts. I will be putting a few links in the descriptions to the stuff that I use. I've probably forgotten a bunch of information, so feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. The rest of this video is going to be a, for most of you guys, very boring time lapse of me drawing up this plate in SolarWorks. I've included this so that if any of you are using SolarWorks want to try and replicate this plate, you can uh, follow my, my lead here. I've also included a download link for the file in the description, so if you want to try and open it up in your preferred 3D program and see how everything is made, you can do that. If you like this video, please remember to hit that subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching.